Welcome to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. If you're looking to get more out of your Shenandoah Valley experience, then this is the podcast for you. You'll meet interesting people, musicians, and comedians that perform here and find out more about what you can do and see. Whether you live here or plan to visit, listen to explore what makes our unique slice of heaven. Now here's your host, Don Davis Womack. Hello, Lappers. I'm excited to introduce you to Susan Keeler and Brianna Shears from Pale Fire Brewing. The people behind this brewery love the moment creativity has sparked and the fact that there is generally a great beer close by. The big idea was scribbled first on a bar napkin with friends noodling around guitars who suddenly realized they've hit on something great. Stories told around a campfire when nobody has a clue what time it is. Great beer is there. In 2013, a space in a renovated ice house in downtown Harrisonburg became available. It was perfect. The wheels were in motion. Pale Fire Brewing Company opened in April 2015. Their tap room is located in downtown Harrisonburg, where you can enjoy their brews, Detroit-style pizzas, community events, trivia nights, live music, and more. Pale Fire Beer is currently distributed in Virginia by Virginia Eagle in Harrisonburg, Blacksburg, Lynchburg, Charlottesville, Winchester, and Northern Virginia, and also by Specialty Beverage in Richmond, Roanoke and Tidewater. Welcome to the show, Susan and Brianna. It's great to have you both on today. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Thanks, Dawn. Yeah, thanks for having us. You bet. I'm excited about this because I do love going to Pale Fire and I really enjoy the Detroit style pizzas. And I can't wait to share with the laughers more about your brewery today. And my first question is I am Very curious. Were either or both of you among the friends noodling around guitars when the big idea was scribbled on a bar napkin? I was not present for that lovely evening. I was not, I wouldn't say I was present either, but I think I was adjacent to the people I knew. I knew the founders early on. Um, I knew it was a dream uh, for both of them. And so I... I was excited. I heard, I heard some, some whisperings about, about another brewery. You know, we already had one in town, um, whispers about a second and it was, it was something I was interested in. And I kind of, I, I put my name in the hat for that. You know, I said, Hey, if this happens, like, you know, talk to me, I'd love to be a part of it. And here we are. Yeah. And Brianna, when did you come on to Pale Fire? Um, I probably started like two or three months after they opened. I heard from a friend that I worked with at another restaurant that Pale Fire was hiring and I was looking for a job. So I came in and Susan interviewed me and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are today on this yeah. Zoom call for the interview. I love it. What are each of your roles there at Pale Fire Brewing Company? We'll start with you, uh, Susan. I am currently the tap room. <laughs> we're an active brewery. We're, we're doing things today. Um, <laughs> I am currently the tap room marketing director. Uh, so that means I'm doing all of the marketing and events uh, for the tap room. And my real connection to the tap room is Brianna. Um, so we work closely together because we are working on opening a new location in Basie in the next few months. Um, and so we'll have a tapper manager there as well that I work with. So. Basie, Virginia. Yes. Okay. Where is that located? Um, it's just outside of Mount Jackson. Um, so you got Mount Jackson exit off of 81 and it's Bryce resort is there. Oh, that's great. (laughs) Yeah. I gotta be excited. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. How about you, Brianna? What's your role? In the tap um, I, room. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the tap room manager. Um, I'm kind of out on the floor. I help manage a team of all of our bar staff, making a schedule, inventory, ordering things, and being present in a friendly space for the community whenever they come visit. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, well, it's a busy brewery right now. That's actually where they are while we're doing this interview. So what is that sound that we're hearing in the background? That was the uh, the pallet jack. Um, so they're, I think they're moving around kegs or something. We might have just gotten delivery. It's 
there's always something going on here. It's, it's hard to find a quiet hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I think that gr- that's great. It shows that you guys are active and hustling and bustling, and we really do enjoy your establishment. I wanted to ask both of you, or you can pick one to answer it. Lappers that are not familiar with your brewery in Harrisonburg, where is the Ice House slash your brewery located? Yeah, so we are in, uh, it's a building called the Ice House. It was an Ice House, you know, they where people bought ice, um, you know, before it came in ice cubes in plastic bags at the grocery store, I guess. <laughs> and then, um, Matchbox renovated it, I guess about eight, eight, nine years ago, something yeah. like that now. And, uh, the, the building itself is located. It's in downtown Harrisonburg, um, but kind of on the edge. And then we're actually kind of set back. Um, but the, the nearest landmark is the farmer's market pavilion and all of the city buildings, so city hall, um, things like that. Um, so if you're familiar, if you've ever been to that, the farmer's market on Saturday or Tuesday, we're just across the street, just across Liberty Street. Which is a good note, Laffers. When you go there, that is the place to park is across the street where the Turner Pavilion is. And they yes. do, there is permit parking there, but there's also several spots where it's open to the public and four hour time frame. So And that's just right across the street. Not far at all. Lots of fun. (laughs) You guys have great. Yeah, welcome. You guys have great beer. Pale Fire took the gold, in fact, placing first the last two years and the Virginia Craft Beer Cup, which is the largest Virginia Craft Beer competition, as I understand it, in the state. And last year was a record where they had 106 breweries that threw their brew in the hat, so to speak. And I've never really heard or about these kinds of competitions and don't really know much about them. So how does a craft beer competition work exactly? Um, Susan, you can help me with this one. I've, <laughs> I have attended the, <laughs> uh, I've been attendee, um, but breweries submit their beers mm-hmm. um, and there's a panel of judges and they, do all the tasting like prior to the actual event. Um, yeah, we, everyone submits their, their beer in a specific category. Um, and then depending on how many, how many beers are submitted in each category sort of is how they kind of combine and taste. So if IPAs are their own category or double IPA or hazy, they might break up all of those because they get a lot of submissions, but if they're not getting many Belgians, you know, instead of like a Belgian golden or a Cezanne or a, triple they might combine those categories um, because it is a smaller pool with just virginia beers but we send them our beers that we choose um in theory it's the ones that we think are the best but we love all of our beers Mm -hmm. and then it's blind tastings so there's judges and they i think one of the fun things is even if you don't place in the competition they send you tasting notes so you know if something was wrong with that batch or kind of how it stood up against other you know virginia ipas or virginia cream ales so then, as Brianna said, we there's an award ceremony in August usually, and we go and you drink a bunch of these beers that people entered, and yeah. you celebrate the wins, and you meet some beer people, and you know, <laughs> it sounds like fun. a good time. Yeah, yeah. A community gathering of people that love beer. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that campfire feel. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> that's great. So, which beer took the gold? Uh, this last year, it was our Taking Water Cream Ale. Okay. Um, and then in the past, our Errant IPA has done uh, well. The Taking oh. Water is a new flavor, right? Hello. Maybe about two years now. Yeah, two years. Okay. Yeah, it's it's one of our best sellers in the tap room. And so is Errant IPA. Uh, is so it were... a, Taking Water an IPA also? That's a cream ale. So, oh, you know, you on the line of that. those beers that, you know... <laughs> refreshing on a nice hot day easy to drink <laughs> i have to try this and see what i think i i tend to part be partial to the red molly myself that's the one i keep that's my go-to <laughs> beer there i love it that's what, a popular one too. it is what what kinds do you have available so we've talked about taking water the red molly what other beers do you all have available right now 
Um, right now we have some New England style IPAs. So we have Negative Boogie. And then we also have Floor Walker, which is a double New England IPA. We have a Belgian triple called Lupin Lil right now. Um, Lucille is our oyster stout. Uh, Rollin' Wave is a hibiscus lime goza. So a little tart. That's probably kind of the, the one flavor that really stands out. And it really, it's one of the few beers that has something outside of kind of those basic beer ingredients. So that's a fun one. We're, we're pretty traditional in the beers that we're brewing and we're not adding crazy flavors or, you know, or we're traditionalists a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Creative traditionalists. Yes. But, yes. Yeah. Every beer doesn't have a flavor, but you know, it's intentional when they do. Yes. I see that. And what are your favorites? Each of you. Uh, well, my favorite is um, Errant. It's our Citra Hopped IPA. Oh, okay. And my favorite is a collaboration that we did with Jack Brown's. Uh, we call it Like a Mug. Oh, good. If you've, if you've been to Jack Brown's Beer and Burger Joint, you're probably familiar with their notchers and the notch lists and all of that. And so we we did a beer with Jack Brown's with them in mind. And the label is, you know, a notch card and it has all these little drawings. Um, so it was it was a fun partnership and I think it's a really good beer too. Okay. I haven't tried that either. There's so much more to explore at Pale Fire Brewing, I see. And I love too that you do these beer flights. And I wanted to see if you could share with the laughers how many beers come in a flight. And you have different sizes, I think, in terms of the ounces that you you serve. So if you could share about that, that would be amazing. Yes. So our flights, we, we have a little flight card that you can fill out. You get to pick five beers um, and they come in a little tray and they are four ounce pours. You don't have to do five if you don't want to, or if you are with your partner or a friend, you can try all of them and share that as well. We do 16 ounce pints as our like regular pour. Um, and then we have the four ounce pours just for tasters. And we also do like 10 ounce half pints. We're a pitcher. If you're, if you're with a bunch of friends and you're ready to hang out for a while and order a pizza, you know, we do pitchers. Yeah. That's some good pizza too. We're going to talk about that <laughs> in a minute, but I have to know who makes the brew first. So our brewer, his name is Ben Mullet. Um, the joke is the party in the back. <laughs> he works in the back of the house and, and he's got that perfect last name for that. Um, but yeah, he's he's joined by two kind of assistant brewers and uh, guys who work in the cellar. Um, so there's really just three people who are responsible for all Pale Fire beer. Wow. Do they have or you have any signature styles or unique brewing techniques that they use that you're aware of? I think we have a pretty traditional system, just like a, a three different tank system. So we've got the kettle and the louder and the boil kettle. So that's that's how we're brewing. And that's a 20 barrel system. And a barrel in a brewery is 31 gallons. Um, so when you're going to buy a keg for a party and that big keg, what a lot of times people will call a full keg is really it's called a half barrel. And so that'll be 15.5 gallons. So in beer in beer world, we talk barrels. So we have a 20 barrel brew house and then we have 40 barrel fermenters and we have five of those and one six, 60 barrel fermenter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot going on how often do you all change flavors beer flavors we probably have about five i'm thinking off the top of my head that stick around you know we've always got errant and red molly taking water um the boogie. negative boogie and then we're kind of changing things in beers will usually last at least three months if they're seasonal and we're we're probably introducing a new beer maybe every two to three months do you know how long it takes from beginning of starting the brew to finish how long it takes to make a barrel of one flavor? We are mostly doing ales. So the process is a little bit shorter than if you were going to do a lager, like a Pilsner or something like that. Um, so most of the beers are from start to finish 
two to three weeks. Oh, that's not bad. No, it's not too bad. It's, you know, it, it feels long when you've got an order that you can't fill. Um, <laughs> in yeah. general, it's not too bad. <laughs> then you want it to be done quicker. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. I, that's really fascinating to me. Do you all ever go in there and help out with that? Or are you more hands off with the uh, beer making? I've helped do canning mm-hmm. and stuff, which is really fun. I really like it. Just kind of set up your system and put on the pack holders and the guys weigh out all the cans. It's really fun. Yeah. They'll come to us too um, if they're making tweaks on a batch, like trying a new hop or, um, or tasting the difference between an old an old batch and a new batch. Or they'll have a sample, you know, carbonation levels. So some actual kind of quality control, uh, which we do all the time in the tap room. But sometimes it's a little more official, and they want our opinion. So that's a fun part of it. You mean tasting the beer as part of your job? Is this what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> no, for sure. Yes. <laughs> no wonder you you stay there. <laughs> you know, I feel like we should be drinking a beer right now. Yeah, I <laughs> know. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> it totally is. And you do sell the beer to people, and I guess other breweries and other establishments if they want in barrels. Do you do that? Yes. So we are selling, most of our beer is going straight to the tap room and going out in either pints or package that way. But we do have, we work with the wholesalers, Virginia Eagle and Specialty, and we're sending them package and kegs. And then they're the ones that sell it to restaurants or grocery stores. Oh, very good. Okay. I see how that works. And you guys didn't just stop at Make and Brew. In February last year, you added these Detroit style pizzas, which is a fantastic addition, if I may say. I love them. What made you all decide to add the yummy pizzas? I mean, why not? Everyone loves pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic period, pizza and beer. Uh, whose idea was it? And how did this all work out? Do you. Tell me the story about how we got these Detroit style pizzas here. I think for the first five years, five, six years of the brewery, we, we were just beer, you know, Virginia had passed a law in 2012 that let us be a tap room, put us on the same page as wineries. And uh, that was SB 604, if anyone's curious, but we were allowed to sell full pints for the first time. And so that's when you saw this huge trend of, tap rooms being open, you know, it was kind of the end of the brew pub and the beginning of the tap room that was, you know, foodless. And we learned very quickly that people want to eat when they're drinking. And so we had snacks and we had some partnerships with nearby restaurants who would offer exclusive delivery. And we always encouraged, you know, carry in or order in pizza. Um, And then we had an opportunity to do it kind of ourselves. It started with a partnership with a company in Waynesboro. Um, and then we recently took it over doing it ourselves in January. Now, did you have to do any renovations to the brewery to make this happen? And was that a lengthy process? And was it seamless without any challenges? <laughs> oh, it was, it wasn't too lengthy. Okay, um, good. We did lose our office. Um, The office is now the kitchen. So now our office is in the production space, which is why you're hearing all these noises today. (laughs) (laughs) The old office is a little quieter. Um, But in general, it was, I think it was pretty seamless. I think we had a lot of planning meetings. A lot of it was the issues were with service and how are we going to change, you know, bartenders have poured beer for however many years and that's all they did. And now all of a sudden we're taking food orders and, running food and cleaning tables um, of plates and silverware. And so that was the big change, but you know, it's not rocket science. No, it seemed to go in pretty quickly just as an outside observer, but I'm not inside. What was the actual time frame from making the decision? We're going to have Detroit specialty pizza to actually serving it. Was it a few months or six months or what, what was the time frame? Between I think it was summer 2021. Okay. There was really the decision to say, yes, we're going to move forward with food. And then it was figuring out exactly how we wanted to do that. 
And then we launched it in February, 2022. So there were, you know, six, seven months there. Yeah. Do you have a favorite pizza that goes with the beers you like? (laughs) I know they're so good. They're looking for a menu. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think it's one of the best sellers in the tap room. And I think my favorite too, but the hot honey meat lovers. So you've got, you know, sausage and bacon jam, pepperoni, ricotta cheese, and then it's finished with this hot honey drizzle and it's a little decadent, but it's good. I think my favorite, I really like the truffle, like our white truffle pizza. It's got Alfredo and mushrooms and spinach, and it's got a drizzle of truffle oil on it. And I always add sausage. So good. Yeah. It's perfect with your beer. (laughs) In fact, it's really all this talk about this yummy pizza is making me really hungry. And since I'm in the podcast studio right now at home and not in your tap room at the moment, I'm going to grab, which I am, some of this delicious gourmet popcorn from our sponsor, Free Pops Dress. And so I can get back over there. They sent you guys some. Did you get it? Oh, yeah. It's popping delicious. <laughs> it is popping delicious. I'm not kidding you. And they're about quality too, just like you all. They are having their popcorn rigorously tested for their handcrafted recipes to satisfy all your sweet and savory craving. I think it goes great with Pale Fire Brew. All made right here locally, 15 minutes from your brewery. You guys ever tried it before now? No, I haven't had it before now, but I think I'm going to have to go visit them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to visit them. I'm trying their, uh, their Buffalo Ranch right now. It's got a little kick to it. And it's cheddary. It's lovely. Oh. So good. That's awesome. Mm. That's so good. Laughers, just use promo code LAUGH15 when you visit prepopsterous.com. That's P-R-E-P-O-P-S-T-E-R-O-U-S dot com. So you can buy yourself some today at a discount. And with that, and you can get the to-go Pellfire Brew. Go with it. (laughs) This Pellfire Brew is so good. And I noticed, too. That you that you are a part of the Shenandoah Beer Works Trail and the Shenandoah Spirits Trail. Mm-hmm. And I don't really know a whole lot about these trails. So what are they and what does being a part of them really mean? Um, well, so the Shenandoah Beer Works Trail is a great um, I guess kind of program that they've come up with where you can have a awesome passport and it has a map of local breweries around and in like the Shenandoah Valley. And if you get stamps and visit these breweries, I think right now you have to get eight, you get a special t-shirt. The Ooh. color this year is a uh, like army green olive. It's one of my personal favorite colors for shirts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> it's a really awesome program they got going to kind of promote visiting local breweries and like craft beer in the valley and just kind of showcasing like nature and the scenery as well that the valley has to offer yeah and the beer works trail um you know it's it's harrisburg rockingham county it's also you know stanton waynesboro um and lexington and uh rockbridge county so it's kind of that that path i probably missed a couple things in there but it's it's Harrisonburg and kind of further south, um, southwest, I think is that. And yeah, it's been really great because they come alongside us and, and they're just really encouraging people to come and, and spend a night or two in the valley or in the area. And they say, you know, go on a hike, do this, eat here, and, but then visit this brewery. You know, that's the one that fits your type of person or your schedule or your location. Um, so they've really put a lot of work into marketing us and it's, we've seen a lot of visitors because of that. I think they even have like a quiz that you can take on their website to kind of direct you to your perfect brewery, which I think is really cool. That is really cool. Have you guys ever taken that quiz? Just to um, see? No, 
I have not. You know, okay. yeah, I think I know what my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I work at my favorite brewery. <laughs> You do. So Lavers can just Google either one of those, I guess, to find out more information. The Shenandoah Beer Works Trail, Shenandoah Spirits Trail to see what all they can do on the, with the passport to get the T-shirt and all those kind of things. Have you tried to go up and down the trails yourselves, ladies? I haven't done it like with a passport, but I definitely do try to go visit other breweries whenever I'm like in the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've been to a lot of the breweries on the trail, but not, you know, not, not in a rigid way to get a t-shirt, but, but a lot of people have done it a lot. Some people have done it multiple years in a row. You know, the the statistics from beer works trail are great because people do it every year and get a new t-shirt and you know, there's no rules. No rules. That sounds like fun. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's amazing. Do you ever get any ideas when you go visit other breweries and then come back and say, Hey, to the team, I saw this at another brewery. What if we did X, Y, and Z? Does that ever happen? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it happens, especially when you're visiting somewhere outside of, outside of Virginia, outside of the Valley, um, even a restaurant. Um, but just something something that a different city is doing, you know, it might be trendy around here and everyone's doing it, but you get outside of our little Shenandoah Valley bubble and we're able to see, you know, what's, what's new in the world, what's different. And I know personally, I always come back with something. If I'm, you know, I hit two or three places, I always have some new fresh idea. Oh, that's really great. Can you give in a, a couple of examples of something that you guys have incorporated at Pale Fire? So a laugher that's listening can maybe like look for it and go, oh, wow, I heard that on the interview. That's really cool. Uh, it's it's far from fancy, but I visited uh, the West Coast a few years ago for beer. I went strictly to hit a bunch of breweries and in Portland, especially you would see, you know, you ask for a glass of water and they would just point you to a water cooler and it's like, there's the water over there. And it wasn't a cold lack of service thing. It was convenient. I thought, well, you know, the next Portland brewery I go to, I know to look for the water cooler. And that is something we do at Pale Fire. You know, if you ask us for a water, we will fill it for you. We'll get you a cup and throw in some ice. But if you don't want to bother us or you know, you drink water very quickly. There's water coolers. There's one inside and there's one on the patio and you just help yourself. Oh, that's neat. Oh. Simple. It was something I really liked. It's a little thing. Yeah. It is a little thing. So I see behind you, speaking of things, looks like a lot of, pro, uh, not product, merch. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Lots of merch. What kinds of merch do you sell? We sell t-shirts, hoodies, zip ups. We just recently added catnip toys. We have dog toys, dog leashes, um, a bunch of different stickers with um, our beer branding on it. We have bottle openers, uh, trucker hats. Did you say that? Mm-hmm. Trucker hats and some beanies. Yeah, it's a little. It's a good selection. Posters. Did you say yep. posters? Posters. Red Molly salad days. Deadly rhythm. Who makes the the decisions on what merch to purchase and what to put on them? That will be us. Yeah. <laughs> we, <do. laughs> we kind of look at things and bounce ideas off of each other or. Um, if customers or staff have ideas, we try to look into that as best we can and stay ahead of trends, I guess you could say. What would you what would you say is trending right now? Do you feel? We keep getting asked to have bucket hats. What in the heck are bucket hats? <laughs> um they're I don't know how to describe <laughs> I it. Even. Like I always think of like fishermen <laughs> Yeah, if you take like a little sailor hat and flip it down, that oh, Gilligan, yeah, kind yeah of. like yeah, yeah. Gilligan, Gilligan from Gilligan's Island, yeah, he right. that OG bucket hat, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what? Wait, might we see some bucket hats then at Pale Fire, or is that a? I think it's possible. I think possible. it's possible. 
Okay. Just going to go with possible right now. That's okay. I can, I can live with that. (laughs) (laughs) And I see too, this is sounds really super fun to me that you have a towny summer cool party that really looks amazing where you're going to have an outdoor beer garden. So they have a tap room laughers where you can be inside the tap room. Then they have a patio, but extending beyond the patio, there is this kind of turnabout circular pavement area. And I'm not sure, and they're going to let us know where the outdoor beer garden is going to be in location to the inside of the tape tape room, the tap room, excuse me, where you're going to have an adult swim bar in that roundabout. Now, I've been over there and I'm trying to picture what an adult swim bar is going to look like in the turnabout. So do tell what does that going to look like? It's really just an outdoor bar. I hate to bust your bubble, but (laughs) it's the whole party. So we call it a cool party, but it's really it's pool party themed. Um, I should start with just what Towny Summer is, I guess. Yes, yes. We started it uh, a few years ago in August and it was, you know, we're in a college town and we see a lot of business from the college students, but when they're gone for the summer, things are a little quieter. There's less traffic. You can just walk into your favorite bar, watering hole. There's no line. You know, we like those things in the Mm -hmm. summer. So we call it Tony summer. And so in August, we decided to have this big party, the last hurrah kind of before things got busy again, before the students come in. Um, and so that took off. And then a couple of years ago, we added a May version and that's our cool party, pool party themed. And so we reference all of these pool things. So this, the bartenders wear lifeguard shirts and we have whistles, um, which is a guilty pleasure, I would say for myself <laughs> to blow a whistle. Um, and then, so we do the outdoor bar. It's in the, it's in the roundabout. And I always remember as a kid and being at the pool in the summer and, you know, they blow the whistle and it's adult swim time. You know, it's like the kids got to sit on the side of the pool for 15 minutes. It's when you go get your snacks. Um, but that's what the, the, the bar references is that adult swim time. So the, the, the outdoor bar strictly has alcoholic beverages. So we call it adult swim. I see. Of course, I was envisioning some sort of outdoor temporary pool that you were going to put out there. <laughs> we can throw out some kiddie pools yeah, and noodles. There's some water. And, yeah, there's some water. <laughs> there's, there's some water out there. <laughs> uh, that's great. That's not the only events that you do. You have regular trivia nights. When are those and is it themed? Um, trivia night we do every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., Um, around the holidays, sometimes we'll do a Halloween theme, um, or in the holidays, like Christmas time, we'll do one of those. Um, it's run by geeks who drink. We have a great host. His name is Matt. Um, and a lot of people come out for trivia. People are serious about trivia in this town. Yes, they are. (laughs) They are. It's a big deal around here. Have you guys t- played it? Um, I try. I'm not I the best at trivia. <laughs> if I get one question right, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I made my contribution to the team. <laughs> I try to help customers sometimes. Like if there is one that I do know, I will tell somebody who ever <laughs> sitting at the bar, I'd be like, hey, this is the answer. Like, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> And Susan's like, and I'm not great at it. I'm not great at it either, Susan. You are not alone. I'm the same. You know, it's like if I get my one question, I'm like, all right, I did my part. You know, I'm. We also do um, Singo on Thursday nights. It's music bingo, which I'm so much better at than trivia. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a little more like, you know, you know the song and, and it's, you know, it's luck. It's, it's so they play the song. Yeah, I've never played Singo before. And I was reading a little bit about it. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. So is there someone in charge of playing songs? They start and stop it. Are people singing along? It looked like I don't understand. Walk walk me through one round of Singo. 
Um, so we have, it's kind of like, we have like a host as well who runs, um, the app for it. Um, and you get to pick like a theme. So it might be like two thousands pop or like nineties country for a whole game. And there's three rounds in a game. So you've got your single line and then you've got the double line and then the full card. And it's just like normal bingo for your card, except instead of it, you know, the, B-I-N-G-O across the top. It's it's every square is just the name of a song. And yeah, and they start playing these songs and they're not trying to trick you. You know, it's not like trivia when right before they say the name of the song, it cuts off. This, they actually are playing the part where it says the name of the song. We've got it up loud and people are dancing and singing along and then you find it on your card and then they go to the next song. And it's literally just bingo with little song clips. Okay. <laughs> Brianna, Brianna's down with that game. Have you won any of the singos then? Um, I usually try and like play, I'll get customers at the bar to play. Like I'll, <laughs> I'll get them to go grab a card and then I'll just tell them to exit off. <laughs> but if I'm not working, I definitely will stay and play. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like one of your favorite things to do over there. Oh, it is. <laughs> She's a big fan. <laughs> I think the Cinco is pretty new. Is it? Is it a pretty new event? Yeah, we added it last fall. Um, and it's it's kind of it's momentum is it's gaining momentum. So right. we're we're excited. We've got some regulars coming out, and you know, a lot of it is just people don't understand what it is. Um, so the first time they're there, it's like, oh, it's this is kind of fun. And even if you don't want to play, it's a fun night to be in because, like I said, it's it's little clips of fun songs. So it's, it's like the best playlist. Who doesn't want to drink to some good music? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or eat pizza. Or eat, <laughs> uh, yes, or eat pizza or drink Pale, pale Fire Brew. I mean, I think we're on a roll here with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> how did you find out about Singo? Was this recommended to you or how did you, how did it? Um, I think some, one of the staff, Okay. We're really like they heard about it and they were super interested in it. So we we're like, okay, we'll, we'll check try it out. It. Yeah. Well, that sounds really good. I love that. Speaking of music, you have live music at Pale Fire frequently, I feel, but I don't run it. So I wanted to ask you <laughs> what kinds of music do you bring into Pale Fire and how often do you have music artists in? Uh, Right now, the easy answer is we're doing music every Friday, generally from about 7 to 10 p.m. So if you come in on Friday, you're going to you're going to catch some live music. Um, and that's that's been really fun. It is it's a pretty good mixture of things. We've got kind of your local cover band kind of thing or a single guy with a guitar. Um, sometimes we have some kind of folk Americana duos coming in full bands. Sometimes it's a night of you know, three local bands as opposed to just one, one person doing the whole, you know, three hours, but it really is a mix of everything. Um, so that's, that's Fridays. Occasionally when the situation presents itself, we will bring in a band and do a ticketed show. Um, some of our favorites in the past have been Chatham rabbits and the honey dew drops. Um, those are always sellout shows. Um, so that's, it's fun to do something different. You know, we obviously have to close to the public. We sell tickets, um, but it's, it's a room where it's, it's packed to the gills and just silent um, while people are listening to these singer songwriters. Uh, so that's kind of a special thing, at least for me. I really, I think the community enjoys having those as well. Yeah, that's really great. Do you guys close often for private events or how do you, and how do you work that? So the public knows that, it is a private event. We are getting more and more requests for private events. Uh, people love the, the brewery rehearsal dinner or reception these days. Um, and so I would say there's usually at least one a month, maybe two. And we're just announcing those right now on Facebook and Instagram. So you can check and you can usually find it on our website too. So we try to, we try to let people know, put a sign up in the, in the tap room a few days in advance, you know, I hate that feeling of getting turned away because I didn't see it. Um, so we do really try to get that word out. 
Well, that's good. A beautiful place that you have over there. Kind of, I don't know how to describe it exactly. It's the concrete rustic is kind of what I want to say. <laughs> yeah, cozy industrial, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It makes it a little warm. Yeah, our rugs and our books and... Yeah, we're big fans of the space. Yeah, cozy industrial. I think you hit it right on the nose, Brianna, <laughs> with that. That's really good. Are dogs allowed at the brewery? Yes, dogs are. are allowed. Cats are allowed. Somebody brought a ferret one time, and that was fine as long as they are all leashed. Yeah. We're we don't have any there. problems. Yep. Keep them leashed. Yeah, I brought my <laughs> little puppy there. He has a good time. <laughs> and so does his mama. <laughs> How do you see the craft beer industry evolving in the coming years? How do you plan to stay ahead of the curve? I think a big trend that we're seeing is that breweries are starting to add food or tap rooms are adding food. You know, I, I mentioned that earlier, you were able to open and just serve pints, um, but we really saw that need. And we're seeing that other places are doing that too. You know, people want to eat and drink. And when we added food, a big change was that was we, we became a restaurant, um, which changes our ABC license. So prior to adding food, we could only sell as far as alcohol, what we produce. So if you wanted beer, you had to drink pale fire beer. Um, and that's still the case. You know, we still want you drinking our beer, but we have added wine and cider and liquor, um, in the last year. Um, so that's actually been really fun. Liquor is just about six weeks old right now. So we're still, so We're so fresh. excited about mixing cocktails for you, but it's been really fun to have, have things for different allergies or different, you know, taste preferences. And, you know, now we, now we can serve everyone. Yeah. Now you can, you come to the brewery, even if you don't drink beer, we got you. Yeah. Even non-alcoholic, we've got kombucha, we have non-alcoholic beer, um, sodas, you know, we've, we've got a drink for everybody. That's really great. Did the, did the servers have to learn how to, do mixed drinks? Was there any, was there any training involved? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, so for the training stuff, the, we did kind of small, like soft pop-up events and half the staff would work with Susan and I, and we would train and here's all the ingredients. This is how you build this cocktail. This is what it should look like. Um, and we did two or three of those mm -hmm. soft pop-ups and then we went for it yeah. and it's turned out great. It's been really fun. Yeah. I, th I noticed that the last time I went in, I think it was a week or two ago and I was like, they're serving liquor now. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Surprise indeed. It was great though. Are there any new exciting trends or technologies that you're particularly interested in exploring? Um, we've been playing around with hop water, which would be another non-alcoholic option that we would offer. What is that? Hop water? Yeah. So it's water that is infused with like flavor and, um, hops. Okay. Where yeah, did that... yeah. Tell me more. Go ahead. Susan. There's a big trend, um, not just in beer, but in kind of like food and beverage culture for non-alcoholic options. And so hop water is one that you're seeing some of the big guys do it, the big breweries. And Margaritas. yeah. And so like hops are, you know, the little, it's, Cone. it's, the, it's what gives bitterness to your beer in, in many cases. So there's four main ingredients in beer, water, yeast, malt, and hops. So when you've got an IPA, all that pine, orange, lemon, grapefruit flavor, that's coming from hops. And so we're doing that instead of adding it to kind of a sweet liquid that's going to ferment and make beer, we're, we're adding it to water. So it's this kind of bitter, citrusy, refreshing drink. Like a seltzer? A little sort bit? Sort of, yeah. yeah. It's going to drink like a seltzer. Oh, okay. Wow. Liqueur. Okay. And when, when might we see that happening, do you think? Possibly. I'm not, I know summer. we can't get summer. Okay. So new things are happening. So what's next for Pale Fire Brewing? I think the next big thing is we're opening is, a second location in Basie. Oh, that is big amazing. <laughs> that is a big one. That's but, big. Yeah. So I guess you're recruiting and hiring and doing all of that right now. 
yes, we're, we're hiring right now. Build out is happening. We have a site visit plan soon. So it's, it's go time. It's go time. <laughs> How excited is everybody that you've got a second location opening up? I know people up there have asked me about yeah. it. They'll, they'll come visit the tap room here and be like, when are you opening the location up there? And I'm like, it's coming, it's coming. So people are really excited. <laughs> There's not much up there. (laughs) (laughs) And that's by Bryce Resort, you were saying, right? Yeah. Okay. So something to look forward to. And again, what is the anticipation? When do you anticipate that opening? We're looking at June right now. Okay. Okay. That's right. Thank you. Well, that's all very exciting. I'm really excited that we spent some time together today and I don't want to not leave the laughers hanging with how to follow you on social media or otherwise to get connected with you and get more information. So can you share with them how they can do that? Of course. Uh, you can find us on Facebook as Pale Fire Brewing Company and on Instagram as Pale Fire Brewing. Um, I think those are the big ones that we're doing right now. And then our website is also a great place to find information, especially about the new location. Excellent. Laughers, we're going to be sure to put that information for you in the show notes. Plus, we'll also have that discount promo code LAUGH15 to buy some delicious gourmet popcorn at prepopsterist.com in the show notes for you as well. And thank you so much, Susan and Brianna. This has been super fun chatting with you about all things Pale Fire Brewing today. And I cannot wait for my next visit there. So thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having us. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And then got to get that Buffalo Ranch popcorn. So I'll bring really? some with me the next time for you. And laughers to connect and learn more about Pale Fire Brewing, be sure to visit their website at palefirebrewing.com. That's P-A-L-E, firebrewing.com. Better yet, visit their tap room in person to enjoy their brew, Detroit-style specialty pizzas, live music, community events, and more in the heart of downtown Harrisonburg. We'll be sure to put their physical location for you in the show notes also. And lastly, and most importantly, thanks for tuning in, laughers. Out of all the podcasts out there, you picked us, and we think that's pretty darn special, just like you. Until next time, keep smiling. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. We'll be dropping a new podcast every Wednesday. So check back for another uplifting episode. Come to an X2 Comedy show or let us bring one to you. To find out more, head to X2Comedy.com. Be sure to share this podcast with a friend. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.